I think we're live on Facebook. So great to have you. It is so much fun to interview my friends and the people that I respect most. And it's so cool when they're one and the same, like people that I have this great respect for that are also friends. And I love, I want to give you a formal introduction, but I love thinking back to when we met and we both <laughs> shared later and we were cracking up laughing because I remember it was E-Town. There was an event with James Maskell, I think maybe two years yeah. ago. Right? Yeah. And um, you were presenting uh, Buddies in Your Belly with your daughter. And I was presenting on um, some really interesting cases with the gut and dysbiosis and something called um, auto brewery syndrome, where you actually can make and brew alcohol in your gut from the microbes that are resident in there. So it was really fun. And I remember just like walking in and seeing the other people who were presenting and you were just gorgeous, put together. Oh I mean, the dress was perfect, hair perfect. And, and it was just like, wow, she's just got it all together. I actually like felt kind of frumpy. <laughs> I was sitting next to you. And it's so funny perception, right? Because like, you're yeah. so not pretentious. You're like down to earth. You're the most genuine, beautiful person. Um, and one of my dear friends. But at the time, I'm like, you know, and, I, and then later we talked and it was kind of this mutual girl crush thing. <laughs> it totally was. I was like, well, I remember, I think I saw you in the bathroom. I was like, oh my gosh, it's the Dr. Jill Carnahan. I'm like, I, should I say hi right now or no? Because we're in the bathroom. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh -oh. a fun one. I so remember. And isn't it funny? I love this. I love actually starting with this because people are people. And no matter yeah. where God takes us or what things he's going to do with our lives or our books or our careers or your company, which we're going to hear about, we're still just totally human beings trying to do the best we can. And I always realize that, you know, nobody's any better than anybody else. And I'm certainly not than anybody else. And yeah. it's really humbling because as I got to know you, it's like, you look like a superstar and you are, but you're just this girl next door and one of my yeah. dear friends. And it was really fun just to get to know you after that. And yeah. then to joke about our story. Um, I want to formally introduce you. And then I want you to tell me a little bit about your story on how you got into being this brilliant inventor entrepreneur. Um, so Sarah is a modern day inventor and I love this bio because she really is. She's one of those people that just, I love going on hikes and walks with her because ideas just flow and we're like bouncing back and forth. Um, and you can just see that energy. And I'd love for you to tell if you'd like a little bit about something that happened in your life that really changed your brain and changed some of that ideas yeah. that you shared with me. So yeah. she's known for her innovative ideas that connect science to everyday life. Uh, she delivers impactful science-based solutions for common health problems. She created Even, the first wellness company focusing on providing nutrient support for those taking prescription medications to minimize side effects caused by nutrient depletions. And we're going to dive into this today and the science behind it. Um, the other pill in particular, one of her products is designed for uh, as a companion for women on hormonal forms of birth control, and statin support is designed as a companion for individuals on cholesterol lowering medications. Even believes individuals can get benefit from the medications without compromising their quality of life. And I love that you've developed such a practical, you know, company. We'll dive into that, but let's talk about your story first. Tell us kind of yeah. like just a little bit about how what got you into this. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of have two stories. One is how I got into um, like the health space in general. And then the second one is how I got into even. So the health space, you know, I like I was a kid who loved the human body. Um, I just was always fascinated. I remember like always asking the why questions and, you know, like, oh, what, how, why does it work that way? And I um, came from a family of physicians and, you know, got to watch like a triple bypass surgery in high school, was planning on going to medical school, went through, you know, my pre-med training and um, I worked on a neuro peds and trauma floor in a hospital that was associated with the Mayo Clinic. And I just remember I, I was someone who like, as I was working there, I'm, I'm like, I'm so disheartened that this, the, the reality of the situation is different than what my ideal was in my head. And, you know, I, I remember like going on shifts and like, you know, seeing these people who needed the care. And I was like, I just, 
I really believe like there's a better way to do this or a different way to do this. And it's really where I develop my passion for the power of nutrients to like really impact the body and have like a, you know, a really key player, which I didn't know at the time, like how significant that would be in my story. But, um, I, you know, my journey really, like I, I had a lot of no's, um, how I've gotten to where I want to go is like, I don't, I actually don't want to go to medical school, which is a really hard decision for me. Cause I didn't want to follow a path that I was like, I, it just wasn't right. Like I, I saw that really early on. So, um, you know, for me, I, um, just started digging and I was like, okay, well, if it's not that, what is it? Right. And I, I really discovered like my passion for nutrition and started a program that was kind of like a traditional program that I was like, oh, this isn't for me. So I was like, fine, I'll just, I don't know, I'll find something else. And I finally found a program that was really teaching biochemistry, you know, nutrition at its core is biochemistry. And it's very um, complicated and awesome and powerful if we use it properly. So that was really exciting for me to like really find my place. And, you know, it took me like a good decade. Um, so on a personal side, um, you know, my journey to getting to where I'm at with even now, um, there's lots of uh, different things I've gone through, like all of us do in our journeys, right, uh, here on planet Earth. So um, for me, I, I actually went on the pill when I was in my early 20s. And, you know, it served me well, like I was going through my educational process, I was married, and it wasn't really time to have kids. So, you know, it served a great purpose. But quickly, when I started birth control, I was like, I just feel weird and off and not myself. You know, I was like, what, what is going on? And I remember like, I started talking to some of my friends who I also knew were on the pill and they're like, you know, I said, do you feel anything? Like, do you, are you different? Like on the pill? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm moody. I ha like have gained weight. I'm tired. I have headaches. I have low libido. And it was kind of like, welcome to the club, you know? And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, why do, why do we as women kind of have to take the hit for this, right? And, and just like, well, it's just, that is how it is, right? You choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. And it, it was this moment for me that it just sat for me that I knew like there was something there that I was going to figure out later. I just kind of like intuitively, instinctually knew that. So, you know, fast forward, I go through my educational process, um, you know, start working in clinical practice and... I start seeing this pattern and I've learned like I'm a pattern thinker. That's what I love, like to figure out what the patterns are. And I saw, you know, people I was working with, they were on these medications that were giving them benefit. They were important and needed. And then I'd look at their micronutrient status, you know, their vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, oxidative stress markers. And they had all these like pretty blatant micronutrient deficiencies that knowing what I know about nutrition, it's like, there's a direct correlation there between these nutrient depletions and their side effects or these complaints they had. So again, here I go like digging in, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is actually something called drug nutrient interactions. It's extremely well documented in scientific literature. And then I was like, why isn't anyone doing anything about this? You know, I kept digging and digging and digging. So that's really what led me to this idea of like, I want to create something that builds a bridge between the fact that modern medications are so powerful and important and they serve a crucial role in our lives. But we also have to put that with the other truth that these medications that are really powerful deplete nutrients. And if we don't meet those unique nutrient needs of a medication user, they can experience side effects associated with these nutrient depletions over time that can impact even their compliance on their medication. And, you know, for me, it was like, I just, I believe like we have this ability to usher in a new era of medication use where people can get the benefits of their meds and really have good quality of life. And there's way more involved in that. And in, uh, in terms of um, you, you noted it, but part of like, uh, the creativity that has been unlocked for me to think in patterns, I really believe has happened. Like part of my journey too is I've actually had three traumatic uh, brain injuries. Um, I, I played hockey in 
high school and college. And, um, about four and a half years ago, I was in a pretty bad car accident with my husband in uh, Mexico that left me almost unable to walk or talk. They thought I hemorrhaged, um, was bleeding into my brain. And, uh, you know, it was a journey. It took me about a year to heal. And I did a lot of really cool therapies, um, to really allow my brain to heal. And as it healed, it was like, whoa, I'm more creative. Like, this is really cool. And in terms of a way, like, you know, I had things that were connecting that didn't connect before in terms of concepts. Wow. That is so fascinating. I have a really good friend who's an MD and she was struck by lightning. And mm -hmm. after she had that incident, literally intuitiveness, creativity was skyrocketed to a whole different level. And we don't know exactly how this mechanism happens, but it's not uncommon. I've heard stories about these and I really believe it kind of shows to me, I'm getting goosebumps because it's kind of like the resilience of the human body yes. and how like things that should be either fatal or severely incapacitating or cause some severe damage or long-term sequelae, sometimes they actually catapult us to a different level. And I know in a very different way, I've seen that with my life with cancer and Crohn's and mold illness. At the time, it was horrible and it was suffering and it was difficult. But now I realize like that was the greatest gift I could have ever gone through because the understanding and knowledge and experience that we have through those things. And then like your brain, it rewired and you have new connections. And it's amazing to me how that, um, how that happens and then how it can be this really difficult thing and then a blessing. And I think it's relevant because right now people are experiencing listeners. I'm sure every one of you listening has something difficult in your life, oh, yeah. Yeah. right? And what's, what's hard is when you're in the midst of it to understand that there's going to be blessings um, from it because when you're in it, it's a lot harder to see than like in hindsight, we can both look back and be like, oh my gosh, that was amazing how that happened. But at the time it still kind of sucks. Yeah. Right? The darkness is real. It is. And yeah. you know, that's why Jill, I have to say, I have my, um, little toilet paper. I, here I love it. <laughs> my, my mom sent them to me the other day and I was like, you know what? This is exactly what we need. We need a little levity and humor in our lives right now because it is <laughs> Like a lot of people, you know. I saw this the other day. I'm like, what in the world is under on your ears? If you guys can't see, those are little toilet paper rolls. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. Now, the problem, Sarah, is you're so cool. Everybody's going to be like, where can I get me a pair? You have a whole separate business. Right? <laughs> my mom. It's all my mom. She made them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. One of the things you were talking about, and then I want to hear about the company and what you've been doing, is pattern recognition. So this is something that's so cool because you're not an MD, but to me, you're one of the greatest thinkers in this world of integrative functional and how do we actually bridge? For me, it's always been like, I actually chose allopathic medical education because I wanted to make the change within the system that's already there because there's some great things about it. Medications oh, yeah. aren't all bad. And again, they're super helpful for a lot of people. But the thing that you're doing and that I hope to do as well in my own realm is how do we use the best of Western medicine to help people, but then also go deeper and have a bigger toolbox to actually help these nutrient depletions and help them um, live an optimal life and food and air quality and water and all these other things that have a huge mm -hmm. impact. And the other commonality between us, we're both kind of detectives. Like we love diving yeah. into the biochemistry and physiology and like, and asking the question, why? Like, why is this happening and how can we fix it? Um, so how did you get the idea for um, Evan? And tell us about how the company started and a little bit yeah, more about Yeah, you know, so I would say um, my, my biggest thing that I saw was, it's almost like medication use sometimes feels very polarizing, you know, for like, uh, the people using, and even I think physicians, it's kind of like, okay, well, I know this is a really great tool, but then somebody comes back and they're like, well, I'm on my birth control and now I feel like maybe depressed or I'm really moody or I'm, my energy is low or I go on a cholesterol lowering medications and I have muscle pain. And then as a physician, it's like, well, what other tools do I have in my tool belt? Right? Like I want my patient to have really good outcomes and, you know, in terms of like accomplishing their health goals too. So for me, it was like, how cool would it be to, again, build this bridge and give like the providers, these healthcare providers, new tools to use. And then also the patients to be like, I can actually support my unique nutrient needs while I'm on my medication in a very scientifically validated way. Right. And that's something I'm really passionate about doing. It's also why 
we're actually entering a unique space um, of medical foods. So we can talk about what a medical food is. It's not a supplement. It's not a medication. It's actually a crossover between the two. Um, but it has to have some substantiation behind it. And, you know, you actually use it under the supervision of a physician. So um, there's this give and take relationship with meds and they give you benefits but we need to complete the story that they actually do use more nutrients. They can take these nutrients from you. And my passion, like the big vision here is I want to bring nutrient therapy to the forefront of medicine and doing that and giving people these new tools in a new way to think about things can help so many individuals. And I just, I get so excited about that. That's why I wake up every day. I love it. And I love that you mentioned medical food because I've been aware of this term and aware that it really is a crossover and has a different uh, depth and weight to it. Tell, uh, tell everybody listening just a little bit more about what is a medical food? How is it defined? Yeah, yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So it's under the FDA's Orphan Drug Act, uh, medical foods. And basically what it means is it's a product that's used to manage a certain condition or disease um, but it's not a medication that goes through the FDA approval process. So it's, it's a little bit different in terms of most medical foods are using uh, nutrients as therapy. So you'll see a lot of nutrients be used that maybe would even be in like a dietary supplement, but they're going to be at therapeutic doses or they're going to be at in, in certain forms that have been shown to be more, you know, um, impactful, beneficial for certain reasons. So what's cool about a medical food is um, you can actually be a lot more clear in terms of its intended use. Like, what is this for, right? Like a lot of supplements, you, you kind of have to use like coded wording of what it is. And, and, you know, supplements are highly unregulated. Like it's, there's not really any standards, like companies kind of decide to have standards themselves, but it's like, okay, I'm going to swallow this capsule. Like, is it green tea extract or is it like somebody's grass they mowed, you know, like a month ago? I don't, I don't know. And I'm not knocking supplements. Like I love them. I use them. I, I believe in them heavily, but medical foods have a much higher level of, um, regulatory, um, uh, I guess not, I don't want to say regulatory, but just in terms of their quality, there's a lot more um, that you have to report on, like certain things that you have to do in terms of your manufacturing. Um, and then we can say things like, hey, this is actually for the um, dietary management of nutrient deficiencies that are caused by this medication class, which is awesome. So it's very clear why you're using them. So there's a lot of different medical foods, you know, other examples of like, Deplin is one that's high dose methylfolate that can be used for the treatment of depression because of the way that it impacts neurotransmitters. So it's, it's kind of like medical foods are a way we get a little more geeky about our biochemistry and very targeted for somebody's needs in terms of their uh, conditions that, you know, have been identified. It sounds like you can actually kind of, you can make claims basically as well, like that, that because you've proven so yeah. just it's a whole nother level of uh, like as a physician and say I have your product and I know it's a medical food. Well, I know that there's been a certain level of testing and integrity in the production and, and actually, you know, checking in with the FDA. So um, we can say it is what, it, what you say it is, which is great for our, you know, patients or for physicians. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's got to be scientific uh, substantiation behind, you know, a medical food. It can't be just like, Hey, we just want to, say this because we say it, like there has to be good, you know, scientific research behind it. So let's talk about the pill because so many people that are listening are women. And for those who aren't, they probably know women <laughs> and know women that are on the pill or are women on the pill. So let's talk a little bit about that. What, what's going on with the pill? What, what nutrient depletions does it cause? And tell us more about the other pill. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the pill is oral contraceptives, you know, and there's a lot of different kinds and there's like combination with estrogen, progesterone. Um, and I say that saying there's different types that are in the different types of oral contraceptives. And then there's other forms of hormonal birth control, right? Like IUDs and implants and, you know, shots. And they, they keep coming out with more and more patches and rings and all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, in terms of what are some of the nutrient deficiencies, the big categories 
are B vitamins, um, specific minerals, especially zinc, selenium, and magnesium, and then certain mitochondrial antioxidants, as well as um, a lot of the nutrients and the detoxification support that the liver needs um, to get rid of hormonal metabolites. So what I love, like uh, a lot of OB guys that I've talked to, they, they have this phrase of like, estrogen is a use it and lose it hormone, right? Like we want the effects, we want it to hit, you know, the tissues it's supposed to act on because there's a lot of benefits of estrogen, but then you want to get rid of it. You don't want it to like hang out and, you know, like make its home and start poking on different receptors and doing things that you don't want it to do. And to do that properly, it's got to be metabolized through your liver. And then it's sent uh, into your uh, gallbladder and your, you know, you release it into the intestinal tract and hopefully it gets out of the body. There's a lot more to it than that. But I call that pathway poop out your problems. You know, we all have to get rid of the garbage that our body makes just to be alive or things that we're exposed to. Um, so those are some of the big categories of, you know, nutrients that are depleted or needed. And this isn't just from me. This is actually from the World Health Organization has an official stance on birth control, depleting the body of these key nutrients, and a call to action that clinicians should supplement with these nutrients as a first line therapy. Like when I was digging into the literature and reading that, I'm like, holy cow, like why aren't we talking about this more, right? And like, if you look online of like, okay, hey, you know, if you're a physician prescribing birth control, what, what should you do if your patient comes in and they report depression? I was just looking at this yesterday and it's like, well, tell them they'll probably get better, like just to stick with it, you know? And it's like, wait a minute though. Like we know that the literature shows that 80% of women within 30 to 90 days of going on birth control have altered tryptophan metabolism. And tryptophan is a precursor amino acid to our feel good serotonin and our sleep well melatonin. So if we alter that pathway, would it make sense why somebody all of a sudden has mood alterations and like, I'm anxious, I'm, you know, depressed, I feel overwhelmed, I'm angry and agitated. Like, yeah, it does, you know, and it's, and then we can, it's a simple solution. That's what's so cool about it, where women can still get the benefits of birth control. They can be on it for the different reasons they need it and they can feel great and feel like themselves. Yes, Sarah, I see this all the time in clinical practice where young women, in fact, just today I had an appointment and I talked to a young woman who um, was talking about for PCOS, she was put on birth control at mm -hmm. 17 and no one told her that it would cause mood alterations, decreased libido and multiple other symptoms. And she's like, at 17, you don't even think to ask. And doctors, I can tell you, they're not telling their patients these are the risks in general. I mean, granted, there's probably some of them who are really giving informed consent, but in general, that is not common practice. And I would also say, here I am, I'm in functional medicine. I really understand biochemistry and nutrient depletions. Um, and of course, I probably prescribe a little bit less medications than average, but I still prescribe medications. Mm -hmm. And um, But the average physician isn't trained on nutrient depletions, doesn't even know it exists. And I would say, if I'd um, pull 10 of my OB-GYN colleagues, I bet you nine of the 10 would not even know that birth control pills in general will deplete um, B6 and some of those and tell us what other nutrients it depletes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, maybe I can tie them to symptoms too, because I think that's always so fun. Yeah. So, so B6 is a big one. Um, vitamin B1, which is thiamine and vitamin B2 are also depleted on birth control. And what's really interesting about that is a common side effect of birth control is women can feel like nauseous. They have gut issues, you know, they're, um, it's like, oh, I just don't feel good as I'm on birth control. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. And I, I kind of always like start digging into the literature. Like I'm not going to assume anything. I don't know anything. I'm just going to start looking. Well, I found studies that went all the way back to the 1940s that did these really thorough, um, different models using, um, they were looking at estrogen metabolism and they were depleting, um, the, this was in rats, so it was an animal study, but they were depleting them and their livers of B1 and B2. They completely lost the ability to metabolize estrogen. Wow. And then when they, I mean, it was very thorough. So they did that. Then they like, well, let's wrap it real quick because I'm thinking, okay, you're giving this exogenous, exogenous means from outside in, 
extra um, foreign estrogen to the woman to suppress their natural cycle so that they don't ovulate and they don't get pregnant. And yeah. then what you're saying is the mechanism of the birth control actually induces a process that makes it impossible for them to break down this extra estrogen. Yeah, it makes it harder. Yeah, so it's it's like they start depleting these nutrients their liver needs to metabolize it properly. So, um, and, and what happens is one, you need vitamin B1 and B2 and a bunch of other stuff <laughs> to metabolize estrogen properly in your liver. But what happens is when you don't have enough thiamine, you have this shift from aerobic to anaerobic metabolism and you have more lactic acid or lactate that builds up specifically in the gut and it makes you feel nauseous and have a lot of GI pain, wow. which is really interesting. And then on top of that, we talked about mood with serotonin, melatonin. Well, serotonin, as you know, but something as that's a great reminder is it's just it doesn't just function in our brain, right? It is, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if you don't have a lot of uh, serotonin, even the ability to secrete your digestive enzymes is lower. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm eating food. And now I'm like, oh, I don't feel as good when I'm eating my food because you can have lower serotonin production in your gut as well, which is going to impact your pain perception, digestive enzyme secretion, motility, all these really vital functions, you know, that, are super important um, just for overall health, right? And just your quality of life. Like when you have gut issues, it is a destroyer of like your quality of life, you know? So those are really interesting B1 and B2. Um, in terms of like the other B vitamins, uh, folate is another one that's depleted. Um, so is B12. Um, that's uh, the key ones I'm highlighting, like bigger depletion. So they will even see sometimes women who go on birth control will have different forms of anemia or like if they, you know, folate's such a tough one, right? To like measure status. I love a fig glue, like an organic acid measurement of it to get a really good status. And that's actually what they looked at in a lot of these studies. They looked at their fig glue levels, which is, you know, an earlier marker of like deficiency or insufficient folate levels. And a lot of these women had that. Well, I talked to a lot of OB guys about this and I'm like, Hey, just the fact that we know birth control depletes a nutrient that's super important in early pregnancy before a woman knows she's pregnant to develop that neural tube and allow it to close properly. Isn't that enough to just tell all your patients they should be on a product like this, you know, a supportive companion while you're on your medication. So that's, you know, just that is interesting. And then folate also plays a really crucial role in mood regulation, right? Neurotransmitters and a ton of other stuff, right? Like there's a lot of it. Well, I'm uh, thinking about my own history and I've never really talked a lot publicly about this, but it makes perfect sense. Um, I met my ex-husband at 19 and got married at 21 and I was on the birth control all the way up until my breast cancer at 25. Mm -hmm. And unbeknownst to me, I grew up in a farm, had lots of estrogen-like chemicals that probably predisposed me to the cancer. So these are chemicals that act like estrogens on your body and actually make the cells in your breast divide and grow more quickly so that I was, amongst other things, um, causing this. That was one factor. And then birth control, there's no doubt in my mind that that probably accelerated the process. And as you mentioned this, I also didn't know I was silent celiac for many years, which also mm -hmm. led to pernicious anemia, which is a B12 deficiency. So if I came into this with excess estrogens from chemicals or estrogen-like substances, then I had birth control on top of that, which depleted folic acid, which is key for repair of rapidly dividing DNA, which is, makes you prone to cancer. And mm -hmm. I had a B12 deficiency prior to that. And then you throw in riboflavin and thiamine, I get the perfect storm. And again, <laughs> I'm not saying that caused my cancer, but there is no doubt in my mind that was one of the factors that was contributing to the cascade that led to me getting cancer at 25. Yeah, absolutely. And another one to throw in there, you know, when we're talking about these different nutrient depletions, some of our antioxidants that I, met, I mentioned earlier. So um, in these studies, they looked at women who went on birth control and they were measuring their oxidative stress markers. A lot of them were lipid peroxidase markers, which I, I think are really great to look at. And every woman who is measured in the birth control group had higher oxidative stress markers when they went on birth control. And then what they did is they intervened and they gave these women a more therapeutic dose of vitamin C and vitamin E, 
which we know are antioxidants in and of themselves, but they also participate in the glutathione cycle, which is our body's main antioxidant. I call it Batman fighting the crimes of inflammation in our body. Glutathione is really important. And so what happened is when they got that within a week, their oxidative stress markers normalized. Wow. So, you know, oxidative stress is a big deal, right? Like I think about just even women with fatigue and headaches, um, oxidative stress, it's like you're inflamed, right? So your little energy buddies that make energy for you called your mitochondria aren't going to work as well. You're going to have issues with nitric oxide that dilates your blood vessels. So could, would it make sense that like, you, you know, you don't feel so great and maybe you get headaches because all those little cranial vessels just, you know, with more of that oxidative stress, you have issues. So um, that's another one that's really interesting. And then um, one of the things that's in the other pill, our formula is calcium d And I love that because it supports phase two conjugation. I like to say like when we have something our body wants to get rid of, it kind of needs to like marry something else and then it escorts it out of the body you know into the gi tract out in the form of a bowel movement and um we we need a little extra support it needs to be gentle support and another thing i'll note is it's important to not support phase one detoxification when you're on hormonal birth control and actually like if you look at genes which i love doing women who have an upregulation of their phase one detoxification that that takes care of hormonal metabolites, they're actually more likely to get pregnant on birth control, especially lower doses, because they're just burning through all those metabolites. Their liver's like, you know, karate chopping it too fast. And so much so that you might still ovulate, right? The impact of the pill isn't there. Um, so that's another thing that's really important. Then we have a couple other things in there that are mitochondrial antioxidants that just work to allow your little, again, these energy buddies make ATP properly for you. Because if you- well, thiamine, riboflavin, B12, yes. these quartz mitochondria. So, yep. so key. Yes. and all for to the liver detoxification, biotransformation. Yep. And just to clarify, if you're listening, super simple. You have phase, and your liver is like your detox organ. It's like your oil filter in your car. So you have phase one, which takes them a nasty, toxic chemical like pesticides or even estrogen, because estrogen is toxic if your body doesn't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So it takes that, puts it into an intermediate, and then that intermediate is taken by phase two, excreted into the bile, and then phase three is when you excrete it through the stool with the bile acids. The interesting thing you mentioned, Sarah, is if you get stuck where your phase one's going really fast and you yeah. have those intermediates building up, they're actually more toxic than the original. So you can get stuck in that in between if phase two isn't working. And phase two is a lot more driven by glutathione and cruciferous vegetables in our diet. And so it's not something where you can always just take one pill and fix it completely. It's a lot more related to diet, lifestyle, and oxidative stress. So this is a really, really key process that you're addressing. Yeah, it's so important. And I, I love what you're bringing up too, which, you know, is so important for women to like, when you're on birth control, right? It's like the C word that everybody's like, well, okay, so if I'm on birth control, is there a risk for cancer? And it's kind of like, well, for some, yes, for some, no. But it's kind of like, if you don't get rid of your hormonal metabolites, whether yeah. your ovaries are making them or you're taking it in an uh, exogenous outside of the body form, that's a problem, you know? And, and it's, it's so important to make sure that happens properly. And then a lot of these nutrients too, just to come back and do full circle, um, are important for the thyroid function. So, you know, a lot of women who are on birth control are like, oh, my thyroid's problematic. Well, sometimes it has to do with like, the thyroid's just not getting the nutrients it needs to be able to function properly, which is a big deal. And then um, we can also talk about libido because I think that's a big yeah. one that is really important. Um, yeah, raise your hand out there if you've experienced birth control pill in the past and you've had an effect on libido. Oh yeah, I see everybody's raising their hands here. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like one of those like, wait a minute, I went on the pill or my birth control because I don't want get, to get pregnant. And while I'm on my birth control, I don't want to have sex. Like that's how <laughs> ironic is that, right? Like and that should have been in uh, Elena Morissette's uh, ironic song, you know? So what's really important there is testosterone and estrogen ratios. Yeah. And the aromatase uh, enzyme that converts those two 
is really important um, for that to function properly. We don't want um, all of our testosterone to be converted into estrogen. And so zinc is a nutrient that actually makes sure that aromatase uh, enzyme is functioning properly so we can still have adequate ratios of testosterone along with the estrogen. And then the other thing that's important there is sex hormone binding globulin, which is the, our little taxi cab for our hormones. And when that gets higher, what happens is not only is it gobbling up you know, estrogen and our free hormones, but it, for a lot of women, it gobbles up kind of like the, the free testosterone that is there that's like contributing to their sex drive. And then all of a sudden it's gone. So, you know, we've had, I had a, um, an OB guy reach out to me and she's like, Sarah, I saw a patient. She just came in. She's been on the other pill for 40 days. And she told me like, she wants to work out now. She has better energy and she actually wants to have sex again. <laughs> and, then, and then she was like, and I can't wait to try it myself. <laughs> that I was, love it. Yeah. yeah. Which I was like, we, like we need to support women, right? Like women deserve to feel good while they get the benefits of their birth control. And I don't think it has to be one or the other. And that's really like the option that's out there in the world. And to me, I'm like, it's not a good enough option. Like birth yeah. control isn't going away. Women need it for different reasons. So let's help them feel awesome while they're on their birth control and meet those unique nutrient needs. Gosh, I love that. And I know this is so relevant, whether it's someone in their mother or their daughter or their sister or themselves or a man who's he hearing for his wife or his daughter. So this is relevant to everybody. Um, yeah. I want to definitely uh, touch briefly on the statin support that you have. And then I want to dive into in the last few minutes about just kind of tips on overall health and stuff. So mm -hmm. tell us just a little brief overview um, on statin support. And what, yeah, what statin support is, uh, statins are a group of medications that lower cholesterol. Um, they're HMG, CoA, reductase inhibitor, um, you know, is, is the technical name of that. But basically what they're doing is they're lowering the quote unquote bad cholesterol. Now there's lots of debate about that, but they also have other benefits on top of that. Like they improve endothelial function, they stabilize plaque. Um, in some ways they reduce inflammation. So I always like to show the positive of the medication and you know, just highlight the fact that they really have their place. So at the same time, while people are using these medications, um, a lot of times they get um, different types of side effects that are really common for this category. And that can be muscle pain and weakness. Uh, which is really common. And I would say like, I want to say it's underreported or underrecognized. I think like it's estimated like 40 to 50% of people on statins have muscle pain. I think some people are just like, well, I don't know if it's just me getting older. And yeah. I'm like, just because you're getting older does not mean you should have more pain, right? Um, right. Brain fog, you know, fatigue, headaches, um, immune, uh, you know, changes are some of the things that we see even GI issues that can happen on statins. And it's interesting to look at them because they're, you know, impacting an entire biochemical pathway. Cholesterol is one of the things that it's inhibiting and there's multiple others. So when we're talking about statins, they have kind of their unique subset of nutrients that statin users really need to balance their biochemistry and even out their body so that they can feel great, that they can stay on their statin, get the benefits of it, but not have these issues, right? So some of those nutrients, again, going back to the mitochondria, the little energy buddies, these are crucial for statins. Um, and CoQ10 is something that, you know, a lot of people maybe have heard of. Um, with statins, I'm gonna tell you there's a whole nother mechanism of the muscle pain that happens with statins that has nothing to do with CoQ10. And it's something we're gonna be talking a lot about in the coming months um, because there's some solutions that are very easy and very effective. And I'm so excited for cardiologists to have this tool for their patients and just for people who are on statins. Or you, everybody knows somebody on a statin, right? It's like, Right. They need to be on this supportive product. Um, and another thing that's really interesting about statins is they um, can deplete the vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 looks a lot like CoQ10, and it's also really important for mitochondrial health. Um, and one of the things that, that K2 does is it helps what's called GLA matrix proteins um, make sure that 
calcium goes where it's supposed to go in the body and it keeps calcium from being deposited in the arteries. So what's really interesting about statin use that we've been able to document is that there can be increased arterial calcification over time, which we can see with a calcium score when people have that image. And there's um, some really cool research coming out of Europe where they've actually used therapeutic doses of K2 and they've seen a reversal, a decrease in these calcium scores, which is phenomenal. I that because even without statins, I'm using K2 for people yes. with of the carotid arteries or, yeah. or the heart. And this is really important information. I would love to know if you may not know exact numbers, you probably do, but what a percentage of people are either on birth control or statins. I mean, to me, those are big, big ones. You've chosen a good market because yeah. both of these affect so many people, both men yeah. and women. Yeah. So there is about a hundred million users of birth control. Um, and that would be globally. And birth control is a little bit more transient. You know, they say about 95% of women at some point in time have used birth control, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. one of those, like we use it, sometimes we switch what we're doing and we kind of, you know, move. But um, in general, at one point in time, there's about 100 million women using hormonal birth control. And then in the United States, there's about 45 million statin users. Globally, mm -hmm. it's about 200 million and on the rise because of our lifestyle, right? Like that's a huge contributor. So another thing I'm really passionate about while you're using your medications, we always address lifestyle aspects of people's, you know, what like action plans of what they can do to really improve their quality of life um, because that's a big piece, right? Those are foundational aspects that always need to be addressed. Yeah, I love, love that, Sarah. This is so exciting. And I'm sure people are listening, didn't even know what's coming out and uh, any of the physicians as well. This is really exciting stuff. Um, let's switch in the last few minutes to just practical things. Like I would love to know, um, what's, what's your routine? Like, how do you stay healthy emotionally, physically, mentally? Do you have any tips or tricks for people listening on some of your best hacks for optimal health? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So, um, you know, for me, I really believe that health is about wholeness and that, you know, our, our health and our wholeness is physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And so, you know, and the, the thing about life is like, sometimes we have one of those areas like really dialed in and then one of the other areas is like kind of out of, out of control and not so dialed in. So, you know, like some of us are really good at focusing on our physical health, right? Of like getting movement or eating the right things or getting enough sleep, but maybe we're in relationships that are toxic or, you know, we don't really know how to healthily interact with our family members. Um, and that's, that impacts our wellness, right? So for me, I, I always view it as like all of those different meters. Like I'm driving my car and I'm like, okay, where are my RPMs? What's my speed? Where's my gas tank at? You know, I try to like look at all of those things in my life. So for me, for physical health, um, I had an eating disorder, another part of my journey. And so I really understand the connection with our physical health and our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And what helped me overcome an eating disorder was really understanding my spirituality, like who God is, my identity um, in, in that space and allowing myself to like live out into the world based off of that truth. And it shifted everything for me um, in, a, in a really cool way. So, you know, I, I always say for people, like my husband and I love to talk about spirituality with people and it doesn't have to be this intimidating conversation or something that's like, oh, well, I don't know, or this is how I was raised. It's like, it's just kind of cool to like start asking yourself some questions in that realm. That's how I started. And, um, you know, physically, like I am a huge movement person. Like it doesn't always have to be intense, but I love to walk. I, I walk most days of the week. I'm right now because I can't get to the gym. I'm running, you know, I love running and I run and I pray and I just like, you know, process like my thoughts for the day. Um, I eat healthy, but I don't eat perfect. I'm, I am so not a black and white person that way. And um, it, it actually came out of a place of being very black and white with an eating disorder and learning how to live beautifully in the gray. 
Um, so I, I, love that. I remember Gretchen Rubin, like, I love what she said, cause I always think about this as MC patients, there's abstainers and there's moderators. And, uh, we all usually fall into one side or the other. I happen to be abstainer. So I do like rules because mm -hmm. for me, it's easier. I don't have to make a decision. I'm like, I just don't eat gluten and period never, yeah. ever, ever. But that black and white for me gives me freedom. Cause then if someone gives me gluten or offers me gluten, there's just like, oh, sorry, I, I don't eat that. But on the other side, there's a lot of people like you or, or many of my patients that are moderators, they do not do well with black and white rules. They're like, I need one day where I just eat what I want. And then the rest of the day, they'll be perfect or, or eat really clean. And I love that there's a spectrum. And I always try to recognize with patients, where are you? Because some of them want a rule. It helps them. That box actually gives them structure. Yeah. And then other people actually, it's, it's a problem because then they feel restricted, which is not healthy either. Yeah. And I had to, I had to dance between those two groups because I was like a box person. Yeah. And then I had to learn to heal. I had to learn like to go outside of that. And that was terrifying in its own journey, you know? Um, but then in terms of other things that I do, like I think community is so important for our health and having people in your life like you, Jill, who are life giving, who encourage you, who are champions for you. And, you know, like right now is a tough time, right? Like we're living more in isolation. And so we have to be a little bit more creative of what that community looks like and how we connect in these times. But I think that's so crucial. And then finding ways of like connecting with yourself, like, how am I doing? And why do certain things bother me on, you know, the emotional and mental side of, of our health of digging into those and journaling and, you know, like, um, kind of like self-discovery a little bit more. Those are all things that are important because they drive even our stress response that then impacts our physical body. So it is all of the above on, you know, like a multiple choice on my, you know, my test question, I'm going to answer D, all of the above. Yeah, all of the above. No, I love that. And it gives people, and you mentioned something really important just to speak because we are socially isolated from friends and family and hopefully that's going to start to change but it's really good to think of creative ways i know even you and i and some of our friends here will text encouraging things in the morning or we'll send songs or this morning i sent everybody a picture of a little baby pig that was jumping <laughs> and, and fell off into the the, yes. the boss between the furniture <laughs> i don't know about you but i was laughing so that was hard. A highlight. yeah that was a highlight of my day for sure while it was like chewing on a snack you know <laughs> I need snacks and if you fall get up and try again but it was just yeah, like those yeah, little things. Absolutely. I, I love and you guys do the same to me and there's many other friends in my life I know in yours as well that like how can we maybe it's a text maybe it's a phone call maybe it's a zoom connection copy but these kinds of things are still really important for connection um, yeah. and it's a little harder now we have to be a little bit more deliberate on that um, in encouraging one another um, I love that. And I would say very, very similar to you. It's like finding that movement. And I know we've talked to you about movement yeah. and ideas for me, whether it's prayer, meditation, or actual getting ideas for projects. When I'm moving, my brain is, is very creative. So I, I do feel better when I'm hiking or walking or moving because of that creativity kind of flows. Um, and it's fun to use that as, you know, get out and move, but also create and dream and, and get some big ideas. Yeah. Um, well, that is so cool. I want to uh, know where you, where's your company headed and what's on the forefront. And then I want to know where people can find you and read more about your products. Yeah. So um, we will be launching a complete line this fall um, for a lot of different medication categories. So we have a lot in the works that is um, I would say like kind of, you know, like stealth mode right now and a little bit of our R&D. So if, you know, something we talked about today isn't relevant to you, I promise, like come September, October, we'll have things that are very relevant to um, almost everyone um, in America, which will be really exciting. So we're very excited to give physicians new tools, to give people new tools and to talk about medication use in a new way where it's empowering, right? It's not this like, um, I'm choosing the less of two evils, right? So I'm very excited for people to just have a new way to think about the topic. Um, our website is feeleven.com. So if people want to check out anything, um, our contact information is there. Um, my email, I'm a person who's available. I, I really highly believe in transparency and like accessibility. So my email is sarah at feeleven.com. So if you have any questions you can email me directly gosh thanks for sharing that sarah that's so rare nowadays where people I, know. 
remember one of my favorite authors, like he's a big author, big speaker. He's an attorney. He wrote Love Does, if you know Bob Goss. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He put in his in his first book, his personal phone number and email in the book. And I'm like, what balls does that guy have? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. But it was really, really cool because it was like this personal approach. And he said, sometimes I'll get these calls from random people. And um, but I love thanks for sharing. And I love most of all what maybe people didn't hear about you is um, you're a visionary and you are a an innovator, you're an inventor. And what's neat that we share too is we believe in miracles and we believe in these big dreams. And then we come together and like, Sarah, guess what happened? Oh my gosh, I got a contract for a book next year. Or yeah. you'll tell me, oh my gosh, I got funding on the company. And yeah. it's so fun to share that and to have a, a friend like you that um, is able to think big and then believe for big things. Because a lot of people are like, oh, that's too big. I can't do that. And we can't, right? We know our own limitations, at least for me, I'm always like, Oh God, I cannot do that. But if you help me, I promise I'll show up. <laughs> so, and I love that because all we have to do is have that. Um, a friend of mine once said, you know, the thing about Jill is her childlike faith. And I was like, oh, if that's what people say on my tombstone, I, I'm so happy because I love the fact of showing up with faith. It makes miracles happen. And we've both seen that. Yeah. And I know for you, you're going to see many, many more. Well, so, you as well. I'm excited for the journey ahead. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you for yeah, joining thank us you. Here. And uh, everybody listening, we'll be sure and uh, put Sarah's um, website and other information. And I'll come back in. And if Sarah would like to as well, we'll answer your questions. So thanks for joining us today, everybody. Have a great evening.